for the terrorist attacks on our country, saying that terrorism is a reaction to our involvement in other people's affairs. And obviously and importantly, Omar has a history of launching vicious anti-Semitic screeds. But this week, the Republican Party have been attacked for not standing up to the president and telling him it is clearly unacceptable. Could a Republican, for example, have made the speech we heard today from Sajid Javid in the Conservative Party? Let us talk to Trump supporter Paris Denard, a member of the Trump 2020 campaign advisory board. And thanks so much for joining us. And I know, of course, you won't have heard our Home Secretary's speech, but essentially the party here has massively distanced itself from Trump in a way that the Republican Party hasn't. And I wonder whether you find that comparison interesting. Well, I think the first comparison is I don't understand why they're even engaged in uh, U.S. domestic politics. I mean, they're two totally separate systems, two totally different um, uh, uh, bodies. And so uh, I think it's uh, foolish to uh, make dispersions about the U.S. president and the politics of the United States Republican Party overseas. Uh, I, I don't know why they would spend the time uh, focused well, on the president. One reason may be your, your president is very happy to comment on the internal affairs of other countries. He's talked about our prime minister and the mistake she's made over a Brexit negotiation. So it's, it's not as though he abides by the rule you've just set. But well, I think, but I know, let's, let's be very clear. I think there's a difference between talking about policy that impacts the world and a, poli and a political uh, rally. There is a very big okay. difference. Let me ask you, Paris Denard, whether you can think of any more chilling or scary scene than that rally in a Western democracy since the, a functioning Western democracy since the Second World War. So I, I disagree with you uh, categorizing it as a chilling or frightening I'm, scene. I'm, I'm was, asking the question. You just tell me one that is more chilling that you've seen in a functioning democracy. So what, so what I'm saying that it wasn't chilling, what I'm saying is it wasn't frightening. It's a political rally. And again, you all may not have them in, in London, but here in the United States, we have rallies all the time big rallies. Thousands of people came together and were excited to hear from the President of the United States talk about his vision for the country. And in so much as he listed off the horrific things that some of these congresspersons have said, many of which have been anti-Semitic, many of which have been anti-American, anti, anti heard, but, but the truth is, the and crowd so were chanting, in send response, her home, and he stood there re and let them chant, send her home, about an American citizen, a woman and, uh, and he, he stood there while they chanted that in a way that most observers look at that and say that is not something that is good practice in a democracy. So I think in a democracy, you have a right to free speech. In the United States, we have the United States Constitution, which entitles people to the First Amendment so they can do and say what they please. That includes the language and the remarks and the rhetoric attacking our president and our country that these four members of Congress have done. So they have very much a right to say what they want because it's protected speech under the First Amendment, as do the people who are at a, at a, ra at a political rally chant, just like they chanted in 20, the 2016 campaign, lock her up, talking about Secretary Clinton for all the crimes that she had committed. Had, had I made the same things that she done, I would have been in jail, but guess what? Secretary Clinton is not in jail, and if anybody right. feels that any of these four congresspersons are going to be deported, it's 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 a it, it, they're they're mistaken. They're not. It was a political campaign uh, Paris, moment Paris, and response you, you, that, and the president has distanced himself, said he didn't well, he didn't appreciate it. Yeah, so and, and, I think it's been, been debated. But Paris, look, you are a black what's man. What's being debated? Well, just, the, well how sincere, how sincere the he no, was? No, 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 no. How no. sincere the he was in saying I tried to stop it? How sincere he was in saying he tried to stop it? So now we're debating the sincerity of what he said. So this is the, this is the thing that's no, funny the facts, about people the, the He said, the I facts spoke are, fast. He said, I spoke fast to, to stop them. And the, t the clock shows that he, he let them go on for about 13 seconds. So, no, the fact was wrong when he said, I tried to shut them up. He said, I, I didn't he use said those I words, and he did up. use the word. He used so let, the word. So let's be, if you're going to put words in the mouth of the president, just play the clip again of what he said in the Oval Office. 
and let your viewers listen and decide what he said. 13 seconds, he lets them chant what they wanted They wanted to, wanted to say, and then he continued on. He did not encourage it. He did not engage okay. afterwards. Uh, we'll let, the, listen, we'll let the listeners decide. But I want to ask you one more. Do that. Isn't the truth here, the reason why Republicans are not speaking out against the president with any force, is hope and fear. The hope is that this actually wins elections for the Republicans and humiliates the Democrats. And the fear is that if you speak against this president, he turns against you as a Republican. And you're terrified that that'll, that'll happen. And that is not a good place for the Republican Party to be. My friend, your language is really, really funny. I think that you're doing a disservice to the, your listeners. It is not terrifying. Uh, with, and, and this language is wrong. Um, there are many, there are several Republicans on the House and Senate who spoke out against what the president said or tweeted. Your, your viewers can go and watch it and look and pull it up on Twitter. Many have come out and said that and distanced themselves from it or said they did not like it or said they wouldn't do it. So the idea that Republicans sat silent is not true. On the flip side, there are Republicans who said they agreed with the president's sentiment that if you don't like this country, if you're having remarks and rhetoric that is so anti-American, anti-Semitic, and you're sitting in Congress, that you could go back to wherever you came from and, and see if it's better there. If you like socialism so much, go live in a socialist country. But they're not going to do that. Just like the celebrities who said if Donald Trump becomes president, they're going to move. None of them moved to London. None of them moved to Canada. Paris Denard, we need to leave it there, I'm afraid.